Good morning. Good morning. Wow, that's pretty good. I'm impressed. You, you are awake today. <laughs> good morning and welcome to worship. I am glad that you're joining us this day for this last Sunday in June. I have some announcements. So downstairs in the fellowship hall, there is a round table, and on that round table is a plethora of kitchen items and to-go containers and gladware and, you know, just all sorts of random things, and we believe that you brought them here because they don't belong to the church, and we want you to take them home. And I'm sure you want to have them. And you have two options to get them home. You can, you can take them down from downstairs today. Or on July 1st, you can purchase them from Echo. Their store is located in the same parking lot as Redeemed <laughs> and Dollar General. So those are your options for the good and quality kitchen gear that is located downstairs. The governing board is meeting today after worship and coffee hour-ish, so probably somewhere around 11, 11, 15. If you're on the governing board, we'd love to see you there. If you're not on the governing board but really want to know what we're doing, we'd love to see you there. Basically, the point is we're meeting. It will be in the parlor and hopefully we'll get all of our business done. Crafts meets on Wednesday from 9 to noon. All projects are welcome. So if you have a craft project and enjoy company while crafting, and who doesn't enjoy company while, while crafting, please come down for that. And our monthly mission, which is we do a new one every month, will be shifting next month, which is next week on July, and our July monthly mission will be to water tr the newly planted trees at the VFW, and I'm, look and I'm looking at Sandy, there is a sign-up sheet downstairs, yes there is, and it, if you sign up for a week, you only need to go once, they only need to be watered once a week, it takes two or three people to do it, so it's a really great project for a family or a couple of friends. So you can sign up and we'll help make sure that those trees make it through July. Okay. There are also sign-up sheets downstairs for greeters. Today Ron greeted you, I'm sure, almost warmly. And... <laughs> And he probably made sure that you had a bulletin so you know how to worship. And, well, you know how to worship, but so you know the words we're going to use. And there are sign-up sheets for liturgists, which are folks who help me lead worship. It's really easy. I only give hard names to pronounce to John. Everybody else gets a really easy passage. I save all the hard ones for when John signs up. So it's safe and easy, I promise. Also, coffee hour hosts. So if you want to be a coffee hour host, or if you and a friend want to be a coffee hour host, those sign-up sheets are also downstairs. If you need any help on any of these things, I'm happy to answer questions. Joanne and Nancy can talk to you about being a liturgist, and Ron would probably talk to you about greeting. I don't know. Depends on his mood. And Mary or Stu will be happy to help with coffee hour hosting questions. Also, and lastly, but definitely not least, there will be a celebration of life for Dr. Don Schwing on July 9th. And we'll start here at the church at 11 a.m. for a service. And then refreshments will be offered at their home in Onekama, and everyone is welcome to come and celebrate our friend. So those are our announcements let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we light our candles and listen to our prelude. Oh, 
if you are able, and join with me in the call to worship. The way of our God is holy. Holy One, we seek your presence in our midst. The way of our God is wondrous. Wondrous God, we marvel at your works and marvelous deeds. The way of our God is awesome. Awesome God, we call out to you in hope. Our first hymn is number 57, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the Liberating one, we keep you before us. Our souls rejoice and our hearts are gladdened. Our very beings find safety and security in your presence. We approach you with thanksgiving and anticipation. Enliven us to be your people in the world. Embolden us to live in freedom. Empower us to be your good news. Stand up in us and show us the path of life. As we join together 
in the prayer of confession that is printed in our bulletins. Restoring God. Too often, we accept the conditions of the world around us and impose limitations on what is possible. We bind ourselves to societal conventions, norms, and pressure rather than follow you and your way. We conform to the values of this world rather than pursue the fruit of the Spirit. Show us the path of life and freedom in you. Teach us to plant seeds of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May we perennially bear that fruit. Friends, hear these words of assurance. The guiding spirit opens us to new life and leads us to right paths. Hear the voice that continuously calls, leads and companions with us. Life in the spirit is constantly renewed and restored. Let the grace of God nurture our roots and allow our flourishing. Let us take a moment, friends, to greet each other and those watching at home with the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. Okay. Hi, friends at home. All right. So I would like to invite our youngest people, our younger friends, to come up here and hang out with me for a minute. Maybe. Our young at heart friends. Because I like you. Come on up. Now, it's easiest if you're going to sit up here to use the stairs, but you do it your way. Come over here. (laughs) Right there. Perfect. First and foremost, happy birthday. I'm really excited. Her birthday is today, and today is Lilo and Stitch Day. It's the best day ever. I'm pretty excited about that. Got big plans? No, no big plans. It's fair. So, I brought a jar. See? Now, there's something really cool in that jar, and I want us to look at it, okay? It's it's a rock, it's not a frog. That would be way cooler, though. It's It's kind of a crystal, yeah. So, I'm gonna get it out, okay? can't get it out. I'm a little confused because, see, my hand went into the jar just fine, right? Like, did you see that? Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on how I can get my hand out? <laughs> that was almost a problem. But the rock is still in there. I could dump it out. But we're going to pause there. I had to let go of the rock to get my hand out. Right? That sometimes we don't want to let go of things, but we get stuck if we hang on too tight. And I almost hung on so tight that I got stuck even if I didn't let, which would have made for a really interesting rest of the service with me hanging around with the jar. So, but is it hard? Is it always easy to let go of things that are really important? I bet you could get the rock with your tiny hands. <laughs> I, bet, I bet all of you could get the rock out very easily with your much smaller than me hands. I bet your mom could do it too. Yeah, I had, to, I had to test all of my jars at home, and this was the only jar that had a small enough, but that's. <laughs> Thank you for finding that. I was worried about it. 
I bet you did. Okay. <laughs> so Jesus in our story today is talking about the importance of letting go of some things so that we can do other important things, right? Like I had to let go of the rock so I could get my hand out because I need it for holding things like this and running the iPad and, and preaching. So it's kind of important that I not have a jar for a hand. But it's, sometimes it's hard to let go of things, right? Yeah, like things you really like. You don't always want to share. You don't always want to leave it behind, right? Like I used, my dog used to take his toys outside because he didn't want to let go of them, but then he would forget them out and I'd have to go get them. You're going to learn that because I hear you have a new puppy. Was that exciting or what? I know, and she's new. It's very exciting. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, puppies, it takes a while for puppies to learn that they have sharp teeth and, and hands and or paws, and we have to, you know, it takes a while. But anyways, we'll take out the rock. You can look at it if you want. My friend Stephanie sent it to me because I don't remember why. You want to check it out? It's pretty cool. And let's say a prayer together. What do you want? What? Yeah, it's pretty cool, Rock. Nothing. You want to let your sisters look at it too? We're going to practice letting go, see how it works. <laughs> Can you see it? Let's say a quick prayer together. Loving and gracious God, we are grateful for the ways you help us learn to let go of things that perhaps don't matter as much as doing your work in the world. Help us to be your faithful followers, even when we don't know how. Help guide us down the path that you have set for us. Amen. All right. Thanks, friends. I can take the rock if you don't want it. There we go. All right. We'll put all these things. <laughs> okay. We're going to figure out the stairs. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no God apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a good inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Thus ends our reading. I just want to say how pleased we are to have Sylvia joining us in the choir this morning. Isn't this wonderful? And I want everybody to know, you're all welcome to come up here and sing. It's, you know, it's such a joy to be able to sing for you, and you don't have to be a great singer. We just love to have you up here.
I have fixed my eyes on your hills. Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. All the Spirit's lesser gods have courted me. bids me rise. I have fixed my eyes on your hills. Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. See, I leave the past behind. A new land calls to me. of what might be. I have fixed my eyes on your hills. Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. In my thirst you let me drink the waters of your Savior Jesus Christ, I have fixed my eyes on your hills, Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. All the worlds I have not seen, you open to my view. vision bright and new. I have fixed my eyes on your hills. Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. To the tombs I went to mourn the whole Fix my 
Jerusalem, my destiny. Though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. Our gospel reading this morning is from the, cha the gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, to, taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for his arrival, but they did not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. The older I get, I know, but follow me here. I have noticed a trend as I've aged. The more I can relate to the disciples, to James and John in this scripture, their reaction becomes more understanding, understandable to me. I get it. I really do. I understand their desire to simply burn it down. And I'm willing to bet that perhaps a lot of you also understand this as well. They are worried. Jesus has been preparing them for some time about what is going to happen to him. And the scripture tells us that Jesus has already set his face towards Jerusalem. This is a poetic way of saying that Jesus has decided that they are going to Jerusalem. And for Jesus, there is no turning back. He is firmly headed towards the cross. The disciples are frustrated and on edge. They are trying to get people to take notice. They are trying to get people to hear this good news and to experience Jesus while they can, and they keep getting shown the door. They keep getting asked to leave. No vacancy signs are popping up all over the place. So they are lashing out, suggesting that if Jesus isn't welcome, perhaps Jesus should just burn it all down. I get it. I really do. But Jesus, as usual, has other suggestions. Jesus, as usual, has other plans. And Jesus, as usual, wants his followers to take a different road. But it can be hard to see that road. It can be hard to have the energy and the bravery needed to walk down a different path. 
If you were only to read this part of scripture and nothing else, it might seem like a little bit of an overreaction on the part of the disciples. But in their eyes, it is very much a faithful response. In the beginning of part of the part of in the beginning part of the ninth chapter of Luke, Jesus takes Peter and James and John up to the top of the mountain where suddenly appearing to all of them were Moses and Elijah. It's what is now called the Transfiguration, and it was, as you might imagine, kind of a big deal. So James and John have recently seen Jesus talking with Elijah. So Elijah and his work is fresh in their minds. And just in case the story of Elijah isn't as fresh for us as it was for James and John, I'll fill you in really quick. Elijah was a prophet. His story is told in the first and second Kings. But when he needed to, he was able to literally bring down God's fiery judgment and burn away injustice. So the offer that James and John make isn't just because they are angry, but because in their eyes, it is exactly what Elijah would do. So therefore, it should be what Jesus would do. But again, as we all know, Jesus is anything but a traditionalist. Dan Clendenin, in his blog, Journey with Jesus, points out that there are some translations of the book of Luke that have an added verse that didn't make it into our scripture that we know and use now. He points out that this is his favorite verse that isn't in the Bible. Some of the ancient texts added a conclusion to this story when Jesus rebukes his friends, telling them not to burn it down with this. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Before we dive too deeply into this added verse, I want to clarify that it is very likely not original to the text. There are at least 5,735 manuscripts of the New Testament. And while most of them are not complete, When you have that many to compare, you really can get a very accurate translation of the scripture. So while the added verse is lovely, it is not from Luke. But I'm inclined to agree with our blogger. It might have been a copier's own commentary, but it does does align with the broader message of Jesus. We don't actually have the exact words that Jesus used to rebuke his friends, and I doubt very much he just said, I rebuke you. He probably gave them some explanation. But we can based on what we can guess based on what the other gospels tell us. The Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Luke 19:10. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. John 3.17 The Son of Man came to save what was lost. Matthew 18.11 I could probably just say all those to you for another 20 minutes and still have more. The desire to burn it down is a natural one. And for James and John, it was, as they could see it, what Elijah would do. But as Jesus had tried to prove time and time again, he isn't like the prophets before. He is different. And we, like the disciples, should be asking, what would Jesus do? It's been a hard, long week. And there is a lot of anxiety, and tensions are running high. Women, trans, and non-binary people are worried that they won't have access to life-saving reproductive health care. 
Mothers and fathers are worried that their sons and daughters won't have opportunities for education and careers that they had. Those who have spent their lives working with the over 400,000 kids in the foster care system are worried that the, all, that the already stretched too thin system will soon be overwhelmed. Families that have been trying for years to conceive and begin their family worry about what will happen to their IVF plans in the near future. Parents worry about sending their kids to school, wondering, is this the day they don't come home? Our LGBTQ family and friends and neighbors wonder if they will soon lose the rights they fought so hard to win. This list probably goes on longer than when Jesus talked about how much he came to save us. And the response that most of us have to these things is fear, to fear is flight or fight. So the urge to lash out and be angry is natural. When people are afraid or hurt, we don't always respond with logic. But just as Jesus has turned his face to Jerusalem, we must turn our face towards something else as well. We must look to what God is calling us towards and turn our attention there. I have seen time and time again destruction, hatred, and anger only breed more of the same. So we've got to move past the fear and anger and put our energy into something that inspires hope something that creates love, something that will build us up instead of tearing us down. When we find fear and anxiety, let us strive to be sources of comfort and support. When we find grief, let us be sources of hope. Where we find anger, let us be sources of love and peace. Building community isn't easy. It means taking the time to listen to one another. It means recognizing that there will never ever be a one-size-fits-all solution. It means loving one another and fighting for one another, even if we don't fully understand them, even if we don't agree. It means that we want the best for each other, even if our needs are different. There is a lot of understandable and justifiable righteous anger. And it is tempting to join with James and John and seek to put that righteous anger to work to burn it all down. It is, after all, what Elijah would do. Anger, too, is holy. But Jesus came to build us up. The hymn reminds us we would be building. So, like Jesus, let us do the unexpected and build one another up. Let us build networks of love and support and challenge our community to support in ways almost unheard of out there where instead of engaging one another in love and curiosity, we so often shut one another out for fear and hatred. Here is why this matters. Building each other up, taking care of one another, even just one person at a time, builds strong bonds. It builds community. And when that anger gets turned into love and hope, that is where that magic can happen. That is where we grow into something world-changing. Jesus does not expect any one of us to change the world all by our lonesome. But instead, Jesus spent his entire life giving us the tools to do it together by building community. 
Let us become community builders, planting support and love and peace where others have sown fear and anger and hatred. Amen. Our hymn is your insert, Lead Me, Guide Me. You are invited to stand if you are able. in prayer together. Holy One, you came to live among us so that we might experience your love firsthand. This morning we pause to offer you our prayers and hopes for the world. We pray for our church community. We pray for the town we live in. We pray for the country that we are a part of and the wider world. We pray for our friends and neighbors who are frightened and worried about what is to come. We hold in prayer women who are losing access to life-saving medical care. 
We pray for families trying to conceive. We hold in prayer those in the LGBTQ community who are afraid that their lives and families will not be protected in the future. We remember those who are suffering economic hardship and insecurity in basic needs, praying that abundance can be shared. We pray for those who are suffering mentally, finding it difficult to cope praying that paths open and hope returns. We pray for those who feel rejected, unwanted, and unloved, so they hide their true selves from their friends, family, and the world. Help them to recognize their worth and see that they are loved unconditionally and beyond measure. Open our eyes so that we too may see them as you do. We hold in prayer those whose lives, whose lives have been impacted by gun violence and pray for an end to this kind of pain. We pray for those who are suffering illness or injury, praying that healing come. We ask for forgiveness for the ways that we have ignored systems of oppression. Open our eyes to help us see and our mouths to help us speak out. We pray for those who are suffering loneliness and isolation. May companionship and solace arrive. We pray for those who are suffering discrimination, fear, and violence. May they know respect, rest, and safety. Today, as always, we pray a prayer of peace. We continue to pray for those who are in the path of destruction those who have had their very lives torn apart. We continue to pray, pray for the people of Ukraine and all places where warfare and violence continue to dominate lives. We pray for neighboring countries that struggle to provide support and stay safe. Keeping these prayers in our hearts, we pray together with the words that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to take the offering, we remember that Jesus invites us to follow him in all ways, including the use and sharing of our resources, an accounting of our time, talent, and treasure that reflects our citizenship in the kingdom that brings glory to the Holy One. May these seeds bear fruit.
giver of gifts, receive the resources they, we bring. May they bless our community and our world. May bonds of scarcity be broken as we meet the needs of those around us with the gifts that you have given us. May we be gladdened by giving and rejoice in generosity. Amen. Our final hymn is In the Midst of New Directions, number 363. with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is beside you, guiding and directing your path. So do not live in fear, but enjoy celebrating God's presence and singing God's praise. Amen. Amen. <laughs>